Good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. So uh, we're going to start a ditch project today. Uh, we're going to be working with my uh, Uncle Jamie and Cousin Tim on this project. It's two and a half miles of some pretty nasty brush and a lot of digging. So we've got our 220 Hyundai here. We've got our 621 case payloader with the grapples. We've got the 608B Timberjack Feller Buncher. So we're going to start cutting today and uh see what we can get cut and piled and get some piles burning uh, this ditch we need to go on that side of the road all the way to the highway and then we will continue on to uh the uh south and uh wherever it stops on the next road is where well a couple roads over is where it stops that's where we're gonna stop so uh this is literally gleaner country because up at that farm over there, there's three gleaner combines, like two L2s and an R-series. Uh, the two L2s are kind of sitting like their parts machines. And then over at this farm, there are like three gleaners sitting over there. So while I'm over here, I'm going to uh, get a hold of some of these landowners and see if I can possibly uh, get uh, get onto some of these combines and take a couple home for uh, parts machines. Let's walk over here look real quick and look at what we got going on here. Oh, it's a little rough over there. So, as you can see, this ditch needs uh, a good cleaning. You got stuff like that all the way through. Uh, there's some spots where I think uh, Jamie said there's like three foot or four foot that needs to come out of it. So, going to be a lot of excavator action. I know uh, my viewer Tim's going to enjoy this because uh, we're going to have some Dash 5 Hitachi action here. Uh, yeah, my uncle's 330 digging, and he's bringing his 200, and we might end up bringing our 200 yet. We'll see how things go. So let's get in a buncher and get started. All right, let's get started here. I don't know how close we should get to the ditch right here, because this is mock. I think we'll be all right, though. It feels pretty stable. Nasty 
trees. Ah, there's a mouse. Probably come back later and trim that stump off. You got a little tree over there I need to go get. So I'm actually thinking about taking the second channel that I created to tell everybody about the hacking. And uh, I think I'm going to take it and turn it into an off-road adventure channel. I want to do a little bit of uh, off-roading this summer with my buddy Zach and his wife Kayla. Um, him and I are best friends. And uh, we want to start traveling around a little bit and, you know, doing some things, you know, uh, vacationing and things like that. Go on four-wheel drive adventures. So I think we're going to do that with the channel. So I think that would be kind of cool. Because, let's face it, everybody kind of needs a vacation once in a while, and I haven't had a vacation in a long time, so I think it's time to get out and see the, uh, I guess you could call it seeing the countryside. Ooh, that's one of them. Oh, I hate these trees. They were some kind of ash, and they're really hard. They dig out hard. They cut off hard. They sure take the momentum right out of the blade. You gotta remember that feller buncher blade works on momentum. It doesn't actually work on actual torque. So once that blade gets up to speed, it's it's pretty much unstoppable. But once it gets stopped, then it's it has to get turning again and get wound up again. I mean, a pencil can hold these blades from turning. Still a lot safer than a chainsaw, though. And it don't get poison ivy. It shows up to work on time. Like that. I'm not just gonna rip. 
rip it out. So I got this big mean animal for. Especially 
being hacked. That being hacked would have fell right on getting ready to leave for Con Expo. And been a lot of things to try to straighten out before I left. So everything happens for a reason. So uh, next next time will be my time. But I am definitely going to go down to Louisville, Kentucky in September to the, the uh, Utility Expo. So I'll be down there. So if anybody wants to come see me, I'll let you know when I'm there. And I know uh, my buddy Pete, he said he's going to try to come down and see me. So uh, get to hang out with him at the show. So if anybody else, just let me know if you want to see me. I'll be down there trying to do maybe a meet and greet or something like that. Dirt Perfect will be there for sure. So we get to meet him. My dad's going to come with me. So he'll be down there. It'll be a really fun, fun thing to do. And actually, Utility Expo just sounds like it'll be fun because there'll be tools and stuff also, a lot of tools. Because it's the Utility Expo. So that means plumbing and everything else. Okay, so we'll get some video a little later on outside the machine.
Good morning everybody and welcome back. So uh, we're on day two of this project and actually not yesterday really wasn't a full day but uh, we had some things to take care of in the morning and uh, then we got here and got started but we've got about oh we've got to be every bit of a mile and a half into this project already of debrushing and getting cleaned up. So uh, we're knocking it out pretty quick. Things are going pretty good. I've got this existing brush pile here that somebody made at some point. I'm gonna move it over here so that I can get back along the ditch and uh, keep uh, throwing stuff out. Dad had an appointment today, so uh, I'm here by myself. I'll get this moved over and we've got a few trees big trees to drop that I couldn't do anything with the uh, feller buncher so we'll have to go back through and get that or get those and there's only a handful of them I was gonna start on them this morning but it's, it's not good to do that by yourself so I wait till I have somebody along here with me um, my uncle Jamie's working on a finishing up a crawl space that they poured so as soon as he gets that finished up, he's going to be bringing some of his equipment here and we're going to continue on with the project. I'll show you over here some of the stuff that is going to be fixed along the way because this ditch is in pretty bad shape in a few spots. It really meandered around and cut into the bank and just trashed it out. So it's all stuff that has to be fixed, straightened up. You know, a lot of these ditches, especially this one with the amount of flow that it's got, if one tree was to fall in a storm and the stump got down in the stream, it just, it, the water just goes around that stump, starts eating stuff out. The, uh, the, the log of the tree will end up deflecting the water over and, and just, it can just cause mass damage in a matter of weeks or months, you know. So this ditch has had quite a bit of that happen in it. It's got one spot well right over here where it is twice as wide as it should be and where it originally flowed is full of dirt and now it's flowing into the, uh, the spot that it washed out. Uh, you, can, you can see it right over there. That's where it happened. And there's several spots like that down through here. There's several spots where there was logs completely across that I've gotten out and actually dropped the water level on the back side of the log upstream by a foot and a half at least, just pulling that log out. So it's going to make a huge difference by the time it's, it's cleaned. Yeah, like you can see down in here, I don't know if you can see that over there, but behind that stump there's a log down in there right there. Like that stump, I can actually come back and cut off the feller buncher, but with all that brushing away, I couldn't get to it. So I actually got some new jewelry coming for the end of the stick of the 220. Um, that Hyundai coupler is coming off and we're putting a work brow D-lock on it. Uh, the work brow D-lock will allow me to grab buckets for the 270 and the 200 Hitachi that we already have. So I can utilize all those attachments. And uh, then I'm, I'm still planning on building a ditch bucket for this machine. I want to build a big one, just like the 270 has. So uh, that D-Log coupler is going to be fantastic because then when I build that new bucket, I can also make it so that bucket will fit on the 200 also. So uh, actually this bucket off the 220 will work on the 200 being that's a Rotolock JRB coupler. That uh, coupler also accepts different pin width or pin boss widths, uh, pin to pin dimensions and pin diameters. So it's kind of nice to have them universal uh, universal quick couplers on these machines because if you've got a couple different machines, you can pretty much utilize all your buckets. 
Now it's only like, you can only go like 80 millimeter to 90 millimeter pin size. It's not like you can shove a 35 millimeter pin in it. It's only uh, 80 to 90, but that gives you a huge range of different attachments you can get and not worry about if it's gonna work or not on your machine. So like a lot of the CAD stuff, they're 80 millimeter pins but their pin dimensions are a little different than Hitachi, but with the Roto-Lock or the, the uh, D-Lock from WorkBrow, I believe it's the D-Lock, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, um, they all, you can, you can mix and match things, so that'd be great. And then I've got, I'm going to be getting a WorkBrow thumb, so I'll have a progressive link WorkBrow thumb. So pretty excited about all that for it, so. And then I'm also uh, looking at a uh, actual uh, clearing rake, not like my big wide rake that I've had on it in the past, but it's only going to be like 48 inches wide, and it's going to be kind of like my grapples that I run on the 200. So uh, <clears throat> that rake was going to be pretty far out as far as wait time to get it, but now that we're running, going to run the work brow coupler. I can probably order that rake for like a 200 Hitachi or a 320 Cat and actually get one quicker because those are very common pin to pin dimensions and they might have one in stock because before they were going to build one for a Hyundai and they don't actually build them for Hondas so that was a little bit di different pin dimension. So now this will also make things quicker to get but the problem is the coupler and the thumb are still quite a ways out. But we can use what we've got here until them come. Uh, we gotta remember plant season's coming here soon, so uh, we're not gonna be using the excavators as heavy, so that weight will probably go pretty quick and they'll be here before we know it. So I am pretty excited. I think it's really going to up the performance of this machine having the right attachments on the end. Um, this thumb, don't get me wrong, this thumb works really good. This thumb I think is more, I think I would use it more for demolition than I would land clearing. Uh, it seems to grab demolition materials pretty well, but uh, it's just so flat for grabbing round logs and things. That's what bothers me about it. They, they just pop out of it so easy. But uh, the new thumb will have the hook to it. So it's not like you're just grabbing on a flat surface. Well, if I get that turned around so I get a hold of it. And also I've got a set of straight teeth coming for this bucket. Those will probably get changed here pretty soon. I, just so much stuff gets stuck between them. It's like. It's like when you're eating a beef roast and the beef roast gets stuck between your teeth. That's what it's like taking trees out with this. So I've got those teeth coming. Got to change them. I'm also going to keep these teeth because as soon as I get my, my clearing rake for it, I'll probably run that and then I'll probably put these spade teeth back on this bucket for trenching and things like that. And they, in, in general, they work nice for just moving dirt. Stump still attached to that one. That's all right. It needs to come out anyways. This needs reconstructed. Ooh, darn mulberries. Ugh, nasty. Long roots. So them them spade teeth actually up the capacity of your bucket a little bit um, because you can actually keep material on them. They kind of hold it there, so you're gaining a little more when you're loading trucks and things like that. And plus they're nice because, you know, they're, the material's wearing on them instead of wearing on the cutter edge of the bucket. And the teeth are replaceable, easier than replacing a cutter edge on a bucket. So they act as a smooth edge bucket and they just, they are nice for certain applications, but I don't like them for clearing, like I said. All right. So I'm going to clean this up and then we'll, we'll start camera down there where it gets a little hairier and get a little more video. I'm going to make this a two-part video. I will do one part of the brush 
and then uh, we'll do the other part of the uh, of the actual digging and cleaning. Well, I made it down here to where it gets real hairy. Uh, I got all these stumps to take out. Went through with the buncher and cut the tops out of them. That way I didn't have to deal with the tops. They're mulberry and they're all twisted up and nasty. Get these dug out. Nice thing about this now is the uh, farmer will be able to utilize this ground. He'll be able to farm it. If you're paying taxes on it, might as well farm it. Actually gained him quite a bit of ground here. All the way across this end. This is muck, so they're coming out fairly nice. Got my undercarriage the wrong direction. That's alright. We're not doing extreme work, so I'm not too worried about it. If I'm really prying on stumps and stuff, I don't like to pull over the sprocket ends of the undercarriage. It's just too hard on the final drives, and I know a lot of guys will argue with that point, but uh, a lot of you haven't been into a final drive and understand how they work and how they're assembled. Now, the nice thing is with your sprockets this way, if you're on a hill or something, track chain were to break, you uh, you're not going to lose your, not going to roll out of your tracks. That's for sure. So there are certain instances you want to work over your sprockets, but this kind of stuff, flat ground doesn't matter. I like to uh, be over my idlers. <clears throat> and also, you know, if you're going over the edge of a ditch bank, it's always good to put your idlers forward. That way you know when you smash on the pedals backwards, you're going to back up. You're not going to smash on them and go forward. And run yourself right off in a ditch. That's, that's never a good thing. get the loader here in a little bit and clean this up but look at this big old log jam in here Let's see if we can dip some of that out a lot of sand in there see there's a log in there dip this out throw it up here sift through it with the loader up a little bit look keep flowing we gotta take that deer stand out of that or tree stand out of that uh, tree Do that a little bit out there in the field hopefully somebody will claim it I hate to destroy them some guys will just wad them up and put them in the pile but if it was mine I'd want somebody to to respect it and put it where I can find it funny because I looked at my phone a little bit ago and all the, all the other guys are supposed to be out in, out in uh, Vegas enjoying the, the week and I get a message from Clint at CNC Equipment he found me a D8H with really good tracks on it he's like ah, I should buy it for the undercarriage I'm like you're supposed to be enjoying your, your week not working and here he is sending me stuff Like, 
he is a super nice guy though. I really, I really like Clint there at CNC. Dude's helped me out tremendously. He actually sent me a message when I got hacked. He's like, hey, he's like, let me know if you need some shout outs or something. And uh, you got him. And he said, I'll, I'll help you get your subscribers back and stuff. Let, let everybody know what's going on with your hack and all that. And man, I really appreciated that. Nice guys down there. When I go down to uh, the Utility Expo in Kentucky, I'm definitely gonna make it a point to stop and visit with them. Probably go see Dirt Perfect too while I'm down there, so you don't get jealous that I visited uh, visited Clint, not him. Maybe get to go see Logger Wade. I think that'd be pretty cool. I haven't got to meet him. I, I, he's a guy I think I'd really enjoy. So while we're down there, I might make her rounds. If we start the four wheel drive channel, we might go down there quite a bit. See what happens. There's a lot of trails to be ridden down there. I think that's a good idea to start that channel. It'd be the Dirt Grain Steel backup channel, but uh, also it'll be uh, more of a leisure time channel. You know, I think that'll be fun. Kind of a vacation channel. I call it Dirt Green Steel Off Road. I don't know. I gotta come up with a good name for it. Just quite haven't put my finger on a name yet. I gotta dig all this brush out of this corner. Got the surveyor coming today, so I'm probably gonna uh, dip out and go uh, meet with him, get the uh, survey going for the new homestead. So I think I'm gonna actually end this video right here and uh, then start another one because we got quite a bit of content in this one already. And uh, we'll just start another video. So. I'm gonna get out and get that deer stand out of the tree and get the loader and do some cleanup. So uh, thank you for watching, greatly appreciate it. It is safe to return back to the channel. Um, we've been a week now, so today's Thursday, the anniversary of my, my hacking last week. And uh, everything is back in my possession other than, like I said, the name. And I should be able to change that sometime next week. So I'm really counting down the days to change that back to dirt green steel because I know that's really hurting my views right now. And I'd like to get my name back. So I'll get that changed back. But uh, as of right now, it's perfectly safe to be back here. Uh, it's just the name that's the only discrepancy right now. So I need to make an announcement on the other channel uh, and talk about it, let everybody know, because I know some of them are waiting to come back till they find out the coast is clear on that channel. So I will definitely do that. And I'll probably tell the story of the FBI calling me the other day and how that all went down. So anyways, thank you for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll see you all in the next one, and thank you everyone that returned to the channel. Uh, definitely learned my lesson with that whole hacking deal and know how to prevent it now. So uh, I can assure you we will be back and better than ever. So thank you. Thank you for all your support. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you everybody that reached out and told me that my channel was hacked. Uh, I still haven't got back to everybody on that because when all that stuff happened, it was we were trying to get everything straightened out. And I just know I got notifications on on all my social media platforms from uh, people from around the world that are like, "Hey, 
your stuff's been hacked, and I appreciate that. So, thank you. See you all next time.